This is Daily Armenia, Civilnet's Daily News Digest. Here's what you need to know today. The United Nations' top court has ordered Azerbaijan to guarantee the safety of Armenians who wish to return to their homes in Nagorno-Karabakh following their forcible displacement from the region in September. Azerbaijan must ensure that persons who have left Nagorno-Karabakh and who wish to return to Nagorno-Karabakh are able to do so in a safe, unimpeded, and expeditious manner, the International Court of Justice ruled 13-2 last Friday. Additionally, all Armenians who stayed in Nagorno-Karabakh after September or in the future return there must remain free from the use of force or intimidation that may cause them to flee, the court held. After keeping the region under near-total blockade for more than nine months, Azerbaijan launched a lightning offensive against Nagorno-Karabakh in September, resulting in the collapse of the local government and forcing nearly all of the region's roughly 100,000 Armenians to flee to Armenia. Although the court's orders are legally binding, the ICJ has no enforcement powers and Azerbaijan has, in the past, ignored the court's findings. The rulings represent the latest development in an ongoing legal fight between Armenia and Azerbaijan at the ICJ, sometimes also called the World Court. Yerevan initiated proceedings against Baku at the court more than two years ago, alleging violations of a racial discrimination prevention treaty. Shortly thereafter, Azerbaijan filed a countersuit against Armenia under the same convention. The cases remain ongoing, and the latest rulings are what are called provisional measures, referring to interim orders that are given before a final decision is issued. It is expected to take years before a final determination is made in either case. One Armenian soldier reportedly suffered non-life-threatening injuries when Azerbaijani troops opened fire Saturday on his position along the border, marking the first such incident since the fall of Nagorno-Karabakh in September. In a statement, Armenia's defense ministry said the soldier, whose name has not been made public, received a gunshot wound after Azerbaijani troops opened fire at his post near the village of Parur Savak in Armenia's Ararat region, near the border with Azerbaijan's Nahichevan exclave. The reported shooting took place on the same day Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan once again reiterated his readiness to continue peace talks with Azerbaijan, even while conceding that the two countries remain apart on a number of key issues. Yerevan and Baku still speak different diplomatic languages. We often do not understand each other, Pashinyan told attendees at a summit of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, held in Yerevan. Continuing, the Prime Minister warned that Azerbaijan's actions and rhetoric in the region appear to be laying the groundwork for further violence. They have begun calling the Republic of Armenia Western Azerbaijan. This seems to us to be a preparation for a new war, a new act of military aggression, Pashinyan charged. Last week, Azerbaijan's top diplomat pulled out of talks with his Armenian counterpart initially planned for today in Washington, after a senior U.S. official said there's no chance of business as usual with Azerbaijan after its offensive against Nagorno-Karabakh, and the Senate voted unanimously to suspend all military aid to Azerbaijan for two years. Last month, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev canceled two rounds of scheduled European Union-mediated peace talks with Pashinyan, one in Spain, the other in Belgium. The European Union's top diplomat for the South Caucasus has expressed his support for the rights of Nagorno-Karabakh's Armenians to return to their homes in his opposition to the so-called Zangazur Corridor, a proposed transit route that would connect mainland Azerbaijan and Nakhichevan through Armenia, but beyond Armenia's control. Speaking exclusively with the Armen Press news agency today, Toivo Klar said the EU considers the return of Nagorno-Karabakh's Armenians to the region to be a core issue in a future peace treaty between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Maximum effort should be made to provide the kind of conditions that would allow for for their return, he insisted. Continuing, Klar again reiterated Brussels' willingness to continue mediating between Yerevan and Baku, even after Azerbaijan snubbed two planned summits last month. European Council President Charles Michel is still ready and willing to organize a meeting of the leaders of Armenia and Azerbaijan in Brussels at the earliest possible opportunity, Klar said. Turning to the issue of the so-called Zangazur Corridor, he stressed that Armenia must control any future transit routes crossing its territory, saying this is absolutely the one and only logical arrangement. That echoes remarks last week by U.S. Assistant Secretary of State James O'Brien, who said Washington will support new trade routes only if they are set up with the involvement and consent of Armenia. Azerbaijan has repeatedly indicated it wants the route to be out of Armenia's control and has threatened to use force if Yerevan does not comply. And finally, the civil net number of the day is 1489. That's the name of Armenian filmmaker Shoah Katvartanyan's debut film, which last week was awarded the prize for Best Film at the International Documentary Film Festival in Amsterdam, the world's largest documentary film festival. The film follows the director and her family as they search for her brother Solomon, who was assigned the number 1489 after he went missing in action during the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh War. 
And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.